greetings once again friends. You know, I would like to say beforehand, before you watch this video, that uh, I don't take any enjoyment out of watching this lady utter things that she does not understand. You know, she could be damning her soul for all of eternity by blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And she's a woman made in the image of God, it's not something that I enjoy to see. I want to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pray in the spirit and um, anyway, please feel free to join me. Folks, do not let anyone, anyone stop you from receiving this gift. Folks, do not let anyone, anyone stop you from receiving this gift. Do not let anyone stop you from 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 uh, taking this gift and and using it and exercising it it pleases the lord so much it pleases him you're allowing the holy spirit to edify your spirit you're allowing the holy spirit to build you up in your most holy faith you're allowing the holy spirit to to manifest himself within your born again spirit and and to and to grow your born again spirit and, and to pronounce and, and to speak forth your future Pronounce and, and to speak forth your future. And, and, and through this precious gift of speaking in tongues, we're speaking forth his, his glory. His, we're speaking forth his, 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 his um, we're, we're magnifying him. We're building ourselves up and we're speaking forth, I believe, our future. This is a lie. Nowhere in the scriptures will you find that a man or a woman has the ability to speak forth their own future or manipulate future events. This is an ability man does not have. The scriptures are abundantly clear on this. And now I would like to share an article with you from gotquestions.org. You know, this is quite a handy website. You know, they have a lot of useful information. Of course, they're not uh, infallible. They do make mistakes. But this article that I'm going to share with you does an excellent job of refuting all this charismatic tongues nonsense and uh, it does give an excellent explanation of what true biblical tongues mean what is the gift of speaking in tongues the first occurrence of speaking in tongues occurred on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 verses 1 through 4 the apostles went out and shared the gospel with the crowds, speaking to them in their own languages. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Acts 2 verse 11. The Greek word translated tongues literally means languages. Therefore, the gift of tongues is speaking in a language a person does not know in order to minister to someone who does speak that language. In 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14, Paul discusses miraculous gifts, saying, now, brothers, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you, unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 6. According to the Apostle Paul, and in agreement with the tongues described in Acts, speaking in tongues is valuable to the one hearing God's message in his or her own language, but it is useless to everyone else unless it is interpreted or translated. A person with a gift of interpreting tongues, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 30, 
could understand what a tongue speaker was saying, even though he did not know the language that was being spoken. The tongue's interpreter would then communicate the message of the tongue speaker to everyone else, so all could understand. For this reason, anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says. First Corinthians fourteen verse thirteen. Paul's conclusion regarding tongues that were not interpreted is powerful. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than ten thousand words in a tongue. First Corinthians fourteen verse nineteen. Is the gift of tongues for today? First Corinthians thirteen verse eight mentions the gift of tongues ceasing. Although it connects the ceasing with the arrival of the perfect in verse ten, some point to a difference in the tense of the Greek verbs referring to prophecy and knowledge ceasing, and that of tongues being ceased, as evidence for tongues ceasing before the arrival of the perfect. While possible, this is not explicitly clear from the text. Some also point to passages such as Isaiah twenty-eight verse eleven and Joel two verses twenty-eight and twenty-nine as evidence that speaking in tongues was a sign of God's oncoming judgment. First Corinthians fourteen verse twenty-two describes tongues as a sign to unbelievers. According to this argument, the gift of tongues was a warning to the Jews that God was going to judge Israel for rejecting Jesus Christ as Messiah. Therefore, when God did in fact judge Israel with the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans in A.D. seventy, the gift of tongues would no longer serve its intended purpose. While this view is possible, the primary purpose of tongues being fulfilled does not necessarily demand its cessation. Scripture does not conclusively assert that the gift of speaking in tongues has ceased. At the same time, if the gift of speaking in tongues were active in the church today, it would be performed in agreement with Scripture. It would be in a real and intelligible language, First Corinthians fourteen verse ten. It would be for the purpose of communicating God's word with a person of another language, Acts two verses six through twelve. It would be in agreement with the command God gave through the apostle Paul: If any one speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should speak, one at a time, and some one must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and God. First Corinthians fourteen verses twenty seven and twenty eight. It would also be in accordance with First Corinthians fourteen verse thirty three, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. God most definitely can give a person the gift of speaking in tongues to enable him or her to communicate with a person who speaks another language. The Holy Spirit is sovereign in the dispersion of the spiritual gifts. First Corinthians twelve verse eleven. Just imagine how much more productive missionaries could be if they did not have to go to language school and were instantly able to speak to people in their own language. However, God does not seem to be doing this. Tongues does not seem to occur today in the manner that it did in the New Testament. Despite the fact that it would be immensely useful, the vast majority of believers who claim to practice the gift of speaking in tongues do not do so in agreement with the scriptures I've just mentioned. These facts lead to the conclusion that the gift of tongues has ceased, or is at least a rarity in God's plan for the church today.